All right, welcome back to another episode of Mindful Mayhem. I'm your host, Cody Tucker. As always, be sure to like and subscribe. Share it with friends, do all that shit. Um, happy Pride Month to all the gays and lesbians and people who, you know, listen to uh, The Cure. You know. <laughs> um, yeah, so my anxiety has kicked in uh, full force. <laughs> In the past couple of weeks. So I have not done a like solo episode in a little while. So uh, in that time, yeah, panic attacks come in and go in constantly. <laughs> it was crazy because this shit was like going away and I was doing pretty good. And then out of nowhere, it's like my fucking brain's like, hey, dickhead, remember, uh, I can fucking ruin your life. <laughs> so um, have not been leaving the house at all. Um, pretty much just hanging out watching TV, which got to say, you know, as far as a downside of mental illness, not that much of a downside. I actually enjoy <clears throat> sitting around watching TV, just letting days go by. So this is, it ain't been too bad. <laughs> um, granted, I feel like my heart's about to explode, uh, 90% of the day and, uh, I'm not completely convinced that I'm actually breathing, so <laughs> so that's good. Uh, but I'm getting to watch a lot of Undercover Boss, which is a show that I have not watched much of um, ever. Uh, obviously knew what the show was, but I've been like going and like rewatching episodes. Um, it is the dumbest fucking show ever made, and this is coming from somebody who watches Real Housewives of Beverly Hills religiously, and used to skip school whenever they showed Laguna Beach reruns on MTV. Um, also, diehard fan of The Hills. So, when I say a show is stupid, I mean, you need to take it from me. This show is fucking retarded. Um, I'm sorry, mentally uh, challenged. But, anyways, so if anyone doesn't know the concept of the show, they basically take, like, a company, a decently well-known company, um, and the owner will pretend to be a new employee and the, and then he'll go and basically just like do undercover work to find out what's really going on in his, uh, like in the actual stores of his company. And we are led to believe that the other employees have no fucking clue that this is part of undercover boss, uh, a show that is like widely successful and most likely these people have heard of it. Yet, we're led to believe that, the, that whenever a guy comes in, a new employee, with an entire camera crew and a fucking must, a fake mustache on that's like halfway peeling off. Dude, like the fucking disguises are so bad. They look like, like it's it's barely a step up from the fucking Groucho Marx glass, nose and glasses shits. Like it is, I mean it is so, it's so bad. Like and yeah, and we're led to believe that these people aren't going to be suspicious of, hmm, why the fuck is there a camera crew asking me about my life? I mean, I just, I work at a fucking Safeway. Um, and, like, I don't know what the hell it is with these, like, companies, but they have the saddest fucking people working there at every one of these places. Like, they all have this, like, traumatic life stories, like... Oh, I have six kids. They all have fucking polio. Uh, three of them have webbed feet. Like, they, you know, can't wear flip-flops, but they can swim like a son of a bitch. Like, I mean, I don't remember ever working somewhere where anybody really had that sad of a story. Like, I used to work at Best Buy. And they were, I mean, nobody had that shit going on. I didn't have anybody with, like, who, you know, had leprosy and shit. Like, I mean, we had, like, some of these people have diseases that I thought went away, like, in Cowboy indigenous peoples <laughs> days like it's like oh yeah and my whole family died from tuberculosis like what the fuck are you to how that happen uh yeah like all we had at best we had just a bunch of alcoholics and potheads um not me though i pass on grass um like yeah like the saddest i remember we had a dude that like just went out into the parking lot every like 15 minutes to take a swig off of like a hot ass bottle of whiskey that was in his trunk uh because his wife was and they were like split up, but his wife was like still, but they lived together and his wife would like bring home dudes, <laughs> which that's fucking wild. Um, if you're still out there, buddy, I hope you're doing all right, but <laughs> damn, your, your ex-wife's doing great. 
<laughs> like it was fucking nuts. Like I, I like I never worked somewhere where we had any shit like that. I also didn't try to get to know most of my coworkers. So there may have been some people with, you know, cholera in their fucking household, but um I didn't know about it. I was trying to get in and get the fuck out. So um yeah. Undercover boss, I highly recommend. It is wild. Um I will admit I do tear up on some of them. Like, cause at the end they always fucking give them like, uh, <laughs> like I was watching one the other day and, uh, like, yeah, they were at this like cheesecake place. I don't know what, or not cheesecake place. It's some like pie place. It's like a company that's like known for making like homemade pies and shit. And this dude had been working there for like 35 years working at this fucking pie place. And he had never gotten a raise. He had actually, because of COVID, got deducted pay. <laughs> it's like, dude, you dumb fuck, leave. Like, go, all, every place is hiring right now. Fucking Target just bumped their ship to like $25 an hour. Like, you know, like, what the fuck? And so, you know, he gives this sad story about how, like, he's been so loyal to this company. He worked here for 35 years, blah, blah, blah. Never gotten a raise. He never even really asked for one because he just loves working here. It's like, oh, that's fucking weird. Um... And at the end, you know, the boss, like, pulls off his mustache. <laughs> it's me. Like, it's so-and-so. And they don't have a fucking clue who owns the company. I've never worked somewhere and I knew who the owner was. I mean, unless I worked at, like, Microsoft or somebody, I wouldn't know who owned the shit. Um, which I don't even know if Bill Gates even still owns Microsoft. So, yeah, point proven. Uh, and, like, they usually give people, like, uh, you know, like, oh, you're having to, you know, take the bus to work. It takes you an hour to get to work. I'm going to buy you a car. Like, it's some nice-ass shit. This motherfucker had the goddamn audacity to (laughs) tell this dude, this, like, little tiny Hispanic dude, been working there for 35 fucking years, no raise, actually took a paid deduction. And he said, "Uh, you know, for being so loyal to this company, blah, 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 I'm going to pay you the max amount of money that we pay our bakers. (laughs) <laughs> that was his fucking price. So, uh, yeah, great. $10 an hour. Like, <laughs> like, this dude was just looking. He was like, thank you so much, sir. It was like, dude, you should have. You should have pissed in his mouth. Like, immediately. Like, the second he said that, you should have said, okay, and then what else? Um, and if he's like, oh, no, that's it. Like, you're going to get capped out. Um, yeah, you should have whipped it out and just pissed in his mouth. On camera. Like, God, I was fucking balls on this dude to say, like, hey, man, you know, three and a half decades of, like, work for no money, basically. We're just going to bump you up three bucks an hour. Like, that would be like getting a dollar a decade raise. (laughs) So fucking stupid. Um, I also watched this documentary that is, so one of my favorite movies besides Jurassic Park, which is my favorite movie. Have not seen the new one, but I heard it is a colossal hunk of dog shit. Um, it's pretty disappointing. Still going to go see it, though, if I can get the um, panicky situation down enough to go to a movie theater. Um, so, anyways, enough of that. Um, one of my favorite movies, top three, is Apocalypse Now. Um, if you have not seen Apocalypse Now, you should. It is a fucking incredible movie. Also... One of the wild, I mean, it is a wild ass movie. Um, so Vietnam, like movie set in Vietnam, came out in 1979. Has Marlon Brando, Martin Sheen, uh, a 14 year old Lawrence Fishburne who lied about his age so that he could like go to the Philippines and be in the movie. Um, Harrison Ford, it's like one of his first movies. Uh, who else is in it? Dennis Hopper, Robert Duvall. Yeah, a lot of like really fucking good actors in it. Um, did I say Martin Sheen? Because Martin Sheen is the main actor. Um, anyways. So, yeah, a lot of big name actors in it. Directed by Francis Ford Coppola, a.k.a. Nicolas Cage's uncle. Um, so if you ever wondered how the fuck did Nicolas Cage get to be in movies, well, there you go. Um, so Francis Ford Coppola made this movie as like a follow-up to Godfather and Godfather 2. So, so he makes Godfather 1 and Godfather 2. And while he's making that movie, has to deal with fat-ass Marlon Brando, who is an insufferable dickhead. 
then casts him and is basically like, I'm never working with this son of a bitch ever again. I know he's the greatest actor of all time. Fuck him. Immediately casts him for Apocalypse Now. Says, hey, buddy, um, you, I want you to be in this movie. It's based on this book, Heart of Darkness. I'm going to send you the book, send you the script. need you to show up in the Philippines being like slightly underweight because uh, you're going to be playing a crazy ass colonel who is living in the village in Cambodia and has turned the native Cambodians into like a cult that worships him. Uh, and Martin Sheen's character is getting sent down the river in the shit to kill you. Um, are you an assassin? So um, that is the gist of the movie. Marlon Brando immediately says, need more money. And they're, I think they're already offering him a fuckload of money. He says, I need more. Uh, so every actor took a pay cut. Martin Sheen, every, which is the same bullshit he did for The Godfather. He made all those people, Al Pacino, Robert Duvall, all these people take a massive pay cut so he could be in the movie. Um, after he was already getting paid a fuckload of money. So does the same thing for Apocalypse Now. Francis Ford Coppola is like, ah, God damn it. All right, fine. Um, like, we need you in this movie. This son of a bitch shows up weighing about 350 pounds, bald, has not even opened the book or the script, and is wanting them to just hold up cue cards with his lines on it. And same thing he did for The Godfather. You can find pictures of Robert Duvall with the fucking cards, like the script, taped to his shirt so that Marlon Brando can just keep looking up and like reading the Robert Duvall shirt. Uh, and then ask for more money while he's there and he's like well i'm not gonna work again would also you know knowing that they're having to film like in daylight and get like the natural lighting would wait until the last second to actually start f shooting his scenes because he sit there like no why would he say it like this like start talking like that to francis for couple and francis for couple so like what the fuck so there's this documentary called heart of dark or into the heart of darkness and it is about the filming of that movie and i had seen like bits and pieces it was actually kind of hard to find it um but i finally watched all and holy Shit. Uh, so Francis Ford Coppola had, I think, two heart attacks in the Philippines filming this fucking movie. And when you watch the documentary, you're like, oh, yeah, no shit. He's having to do a Marlon Brando. just like, I don't understand why he would, talk, why he would say it like that. And then he has to do with Dennis Hopper, who's basically getting paid in cocaine, who's just sitting around there with, like, 12 cameras strapped to him, chain-smoking, like, two cigarettes at the same time, being like, Talking about, like, the nature of the universe. Francis Ford Coppola's like, God damn, I just need you to read these fucking lines and let me go home. Meanwhile, Martin Sheen's drunk as shit the whole time. And I think he has a heart attack, even. And then there's these two little shit kids running around who end up being Charlie Sheen and Emilio Estevez. Um, and then Francis Ford Coppola's having to real, uh, deal with the fact that Lawrence Fishburne's fucking 14 years old and is illegal for him to be there making this movie because I think at the time he had to be 17. A lot about his age said he was like 19. And yeah, it's like, holy shit, I would... So whenever I was a kid, I wanted to be a director, like a movie director. I also wanted to be a, like a musician and a actor. I wanted to do a, basically anything that would get me attention. So, yeah. Well, I don't know what Sigmund Freud would say about that, but... <laughs> Probably uh, why I'm doing this bullshit. So, I wanted to be a movie director. Then I started reading about the shit that they have to deal with. And like, hell no. If anyone has any thought in their mind that they want to make a movie, watch that shit and just say, nah, you know what, fuck it. <laughs> like, I, I don't think so. I don't think it's for me. Like, it is insane watching, like, I mean, these are like grown ass men who are just actors. That's all you are. Like, you're not good at anything else. Like, all you can do is just act. And they're just bullshitting about, like, I mean, it is, it is wild to me. Like, I mean, how, like, ugh, fuck me. I don't know. Actors are out of their fucking minds. Uh, speaking of, Amber Heard and Johnny Depp, um, so Amber Heard basically lost. I mean, she lost. The it's funny to see like what like media sources don't want to say it as like her losing. They say, well, actually, they both lost. I'm like, well, one is this amount of money, and one is this amount of money. So not really. Also, for Johnny Depp, that's fucking nothing. I mean, that was like his monthly wine budget <laughs> is what he has to pay. Amber Heard's dumbass is like in the whole ten million now. Um, but it's all right. He'll f she'll fuck her way back to uh, she'll fuck her way into that ten million pretty quick. I'm sure. Shit, if I had ten million, look, I'll tell you this: I am 
massively attracted to crazy people. Um, like full on psychopaths. Uh, don't know what that says about me. I like to think I'm not crazy. I mean, a little mentally unstable, but not like that. But there's something super attractive about Amber Heard. And I'll tell you what, if I look, I'd let her cut the tip of my finger off, hands down. So, Amber Heard, if you're out there, I'm sorry about calling you Amber Turd for the past year, but. <laughs> uh, you seem to don't uh, to not mind any of that kind of abuse, so whatever. But yeah, I mean, it was a actually Johnny Depp's lawyer. Uh, if you're out there too, Jesus, that'd be a hell of a three way because she hates her so much. It is wild watching whenever you'd see like uh, what's name Camille is it Vasquez? I think that's her last name. Whenever you see her like walking up to hand ever heard something, she's just like st- just fucking stares her down. You're like, oh shit. So. Watching them, so okay, so like if I had leukemia and was like ten, um, because I don't think they do make a wish for like adults, like people over twenty. I can't imagine. But if there was an adult make a wish, wow, that's actually a good idea. Might have to scrap this and uh, save that for my future investments. But if there was like an adult make a wish, so like you know you're twenty, so let's say me twenty eight, have leukemia, probably gonna die. Pretty close to being up there would be to watch Amber Heard and uh, Johnny Depp's lawyer, Camille, have like a little like scissor off. <laughs> uh, okay. And me and Johnny Depp could watch. It'd be a little bonding experience. So, anyways, actors are fucking nuts. Um, oh, speaking of actors being nuts. So, okay, so rewind a wee bit. Um there was I'm not I'm not gonna play the video because I'm sure everybody has seen it and I don't know how exactly that works with like getting pulled from shit so I'm not gonna play the video but there was an ex NFL player which I'm sure everybody has seen this video ex NFL player who was at uh, an airport and a United Airlines employee and him got into a bit of a tussle uh, resulting in the surprise surprise ex NFL player knocking the shit out of this dude um, and they're like edited versions and then unedited versions like longer versions of the video and it's kind of hard to tell whose fault it is because like in the first video that i saw it's like a short one and it looks like the nfl player is just walking by and the dude just bitch slaps him the little tiny ass pudgy ass united airlines employee just like bitch slaps him nfl player just knocks his ass out it's like "Eh, well you fucking deserve it i mean don't fight okay i mean one don't fight don't fight black people like they're i mean you just don't have a fucking chance the 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 agility and speed like i mean why do you think mike tyson was i don't know not so <laughs> i'm trying to dig myself out of that one um i'm just saying <laughs> i mean you could name what three white heavyweight champion or boxing legends maybe uh actually you know what i can't I can name, like, what, Tommy Morrison, and he's really just famous because he was in fucking Rocky Five. But, yeah, I mean, I can't think of any white. And whenever a white guy is good at boxing, it's like a novelty. So you have Tyson Fury now. But that's just because nobody gives a fuck about boxing. Um, and then what, Butterbean? Like, Butterbean was just kind of like a novelty. Like, it wasn't really. So anyways, so there's that. Um, I should have stopped talking a while ago, but... <laughs> <laughs> you live and learn. Uh, so anyways, yeah, knocks his ass out. But then I watched a longer video, and it actually kind of looks like the NFL dude's antagonizing him a little bit. And it doesn't seem as like, you know, as like one-sided. But then again, that's that video was edited. So who the fuck knows what happened? I mean, he might have called his mom a bitch. Uh, the whole point of me bringing this up is that actors are fucking delusional people specifically Alec Baldwin (laughs) because right after this Alec Baldwin tweeted this the guy working at the airport is the victim he came to work to do a job the other guy with his big mouth is guilty of workplace abuse where people come to work with an expectation of safety even civility this obviously this asshole who hit this guy should be put on a no-fly list um, this is coming from the dude who fucking killed someone <laughs> at work. 
like not that long ago. Like, dude, you shot a bitch. Like, who in the hell are you to talk about workplace safety? And talking about people like being bad because they have a big mouth. You are known for running your fat fucking mouth and getting your ass in trouble, calling your daughter a pig. Uh, speaking of, Al Baldwin's daughter's hot as fuck, too. Like, I don't know what it is about the Baldwins, but they are a goofy bunch of dudes with a bunch of hot-ass daughters. Um, anyways. Well, it's also because, like, he was banging Kim Basinger, who is a... So, like, why the fuck... Yeah, I mean, Alec Baldwin... And then Al Baldwin was like, you know, had the fucking balls to go, like, talk to little Georgie Stephanopoulos about it and say, like, oh... You know, this is really hurting me, too. <laughs> like, hey, dickhead, you just killed, I think, a mom. Was she a mom? I think she had a kid, yeah. I know she was married. So you just killed a wife and possibly mother. And you're acting like it's an accident. That wasn't no fucking accident. Alec Baldwin meant to shoot that bitch. He was, I mean, you know how hard it is to even, like, hit a target with a gun? In movies, they make it seem like it's easy. You just go pow, 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 and you hit every target. It's pretty fucking hard to aim a gun, especially like an old school ass revolver like they were using. So he had to, I mean, he was probably doing this shit like, and got her. Like, there's no way he just was like, and fucking no. He did it on purpose. No fucking doubt in my mind. I mean, he was saying that was because he was like anti Trump that they put the bullets in there to frame him for murder. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Either way, I think he killed her. On purpose. I do not think it's an accident. He definitely didn't seem to be too tore up about it. Enough to go put himself in the middle of, like, you know, having millions of people watch him talk about what it was like for him to deal with. It's like, hey, uh, we don't give a fuck <laughs> what it was like for you, asshole. You you fucking killed someone. Um, so him talking about workplace safety and how this guy should be put on a no-fly list, the United Airlines uh, employees a victim... How the fuck is he a victim? You don't know what the hell happened. You watched the same video that I did where it looked like the dude got bitch slapped by the United Airlines employee, so he knocked his ass out. Exactly what should have happened. If I walked up to a very large, muscular African American and bitch slapped him, I would hope that I would get knocked out because it would be what I deserved. It doesn't matter if I'm wearing my fucking work uniform. If I'm, I mean, fuck Alec Baldwin. Jesus, actor. That's what I'm saying. Actors are out of their mind. Um, so also, uh, a lot of companies are out of their fucking mind. To go back to a thing that I was talking about not that long ago, um, if there was a dream job for me to have, or a job that I'm most suited for, it is to go into like a company boardroom, listen to them talk about a new idea that they're thinking about doing, and then telling them yes. That's a good idea. Or do not ever bring this up again, ever. And the people who thought of it, get the fuck out. I think that is like a job I'm perfectly suited for. Every year in June, all companies immediately become super pro uh, LGBTQIA+. think I got that right. Um, granted, they only do that in the U.S., and if you look at, like, the company's logo, so, like, all these companies have changed their logos to be rainbow, great. But if you look at how their their company logos are in, like, any Middle Eastern country, eh, ain't no fucking signs of that there. So, do they really give a fuck about gay rights, or do they just want the money that comes along with looking like they give a fuck? Um, I'm going column B. So, Burger King <laughs> went to a new level of fucking retarded and did this <laughs> it was a shit a pride whopper uh, time to be proud where they took same side buns and put them on the same sandwich to promote you know that they're okay with people being gay um, which one gay people don't eat Burger King if it was called Burger Queen maybe <laughs> um but no, gay people don't eat. I don't think gay people eat fast food, to be honest. I don't remember. I mean, I know a few gay people. I've never seen them eat fast food. They always just somehow bring lunch, and it's always like this amazing fucking lunch. Like, I remember like it, like whenever I used to, you know, have like a real job. Uh, <laughs> like every employee that I worked with who was gay would like bring this lunch, and it was like it was like Molly Ringwald and Breakfast Club. How like her lunch is like this sushi and this like nice ass like fucking ebony like wood box and she had like her own little soy sauce cup like that's how gay people eat lunch um 
They do not go to fucking Burger King. Um, like, I can't think of any. Yeah, I've never seen a gay person eat fast food. Don't know what that was in my mouth, but whatever. <laughs> Probably book. So, um, yeah, the gay people don't care about this shit. Um, actually, how, how I know that pe- gay people don't care about what the fuck these companies do. Chick-fil-A is known to fucking hate gay people. They are like one step below the Westboro Baptist Church. Every gay person I know is like, I don't give a fuck, man. Those sandwiches are good as shit. Like, they still eat at Chick-fil-A. So, hey, what, you think Chick-fil-A is going to do this shit? Hell no. Bur- Burger King, you are not getting any... This is not helping you by doing this shit. Like, that is... Holy hell. Like, what they should do... Burger King should just start, might as well just start serving hot dogs with mayonnaise on the outside of them. <laughs> um, but yeah, look, love is love. I think be gay, be straight, be um, both. I guess that's bisexual. Yeah, be bi. I don't know what the I and A mean. L, G, L lesbian, G, gay, B, bisexual, T, trans, LGBTQ, queer. Which is weird because I always thought queer was like not a good thing to say. Because I've been calling people queer for 20 years. Um, thinking that it was an insult. Probably should not have invented to any of that. Um, I, what the fuck does I mean? And then A, I think, is A asexual? I mean, why the fuck do you need to promote that you're asexual? I mean, most people are asexual not by choice. I'm asexual. You think it's because I want to be? No. <laughs> you know, you don't have options. Just... Anyway, uh, okay. So, yeah, that is, that's so fucking crazy. Uh, also, I guess apparently Jean-Claude Van Damme is promoting. <laughs> Holy shit. So, another the another uh, actor's being out of their fucking mind. Uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme posted this picture on his Instagram of him with his son. So, it was part of a two- picture thing i'm not gonna show the first one because it's actually like a nice picture and well there's nothing fun to talk about with that it was a picture of him with his son like i don't know probably 25 30 years ago his son wearing like his karate gi and john clumber dim's like standing next to him probably one of the few times he ever saw his kid growing up <laughs> um and took this picture then not that long ago he took a picture with his son and his son is in like his 30s this is the picture it's gay as hell. What the fuck? Like, okay, me and my dad actually decently closer than we used to be. We used to just not get along. And we're actually decently closer. We would never do this. <laughs> Which I actually showed this to my dad. I was like, hey, you want to take a picture like this for Father's Day? And he basically told me, like, if you ever say that again, I'm going to fucking cut your fucking head off. Um, and, yeah, I mean, this is weird. Like, I... I mean, I get, okay, maybe because it's your son. The fact that they're shirtless with jeans on. Okay, so that's also kind of a, geez, I hate to just keep going back to this, but kind of a gay look, shirtless with jeans. Because um, normally, if you take off your shirt when you're wearing jeans, um, my mind immediately thinks of Top Gun volleyball scene, which is, I mean, there are gay porns that are less gay than that scene. Um like you, I mean, I could watch a dude butt fuck a dude and think it was straighter than watching Tom Cruise, Val Kilmer, Anthony Edwards, and then whatever the fuck the other guy's name is playing volleyball, all lubed up, wearing tight ass jeans in the sand, which can't be fucking comfortable, and then them just keep checking their watches like flex on. I'm like fuck yeah, like look at me, like this is um, crossing into that. Very much. And that's your son. And, like, what, like how they have their arms around each other. And, like, his son's probably, I mean, he's probably poking him right in the middle of his spine. <laughs> God damn. I mean, that is weird. <clears throat> anyway, so actors are out of their fucking minds. And then one last thing of empl- uh, companies just doing dumb shit. I mean, uh, okay, people are probably not going to like that I'm calling this dumb. But whatever. So Calvin Klein hired a pregnant man, in quotation marks, almost as if he really isn't a pregnant man. (laughs) Wait, why is this picture so fucking big? Blocking my chin. All right. Calvin Klein hired a pregnant man for new campaign. No, they didn't. (laughs) They sure did not. They hired 
a woman with a beard. That's it. I mean, look, I know the new She-Hulk is coming out, so everybody thinks that, you know, this shit just doesn't matter. You gotta have a womb. You gotta have a fucking, uh, what is it called? A uterus to get pregnant. Gotta have one. Guess who doesn't have uteruses? Or uteri? Dudes. So this word, after pregnant, man, would imply that you do not have a uterus. Or are even capable of having a uterus. Slash ovaries. Slash eggs. Slash fallopian tubes. I'm trying to remember what was in my 8th grade health uh, textbook. Um, testes? Testes are guys. For guys. Uh, what the fuck else do women have? Ovaries. I mean, there's a labia somewhere. I don't know what that is. There's a labia I know is in is somewhere in the mix. <laughs> and then there's a u- urethra. No, guys have urethras because of Hank Hill. A narrow urethra. Um, anyways, so maybe I shouldn't be talking about this because I really don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. But oh well, uh, such is life. Dunning Kruger syndrome. Um, so yeah. I don't know if it's like an instinctual thing or nature versus nurture, not sure. But it's fucking weird to me. Because I'll be honest with you, this guy, I don't look far off from this. (laughs) I mean, uh, my legs are bigger for sure. But like, if I was sitting in that same position, I don't look much different than that. Um. It's fucking weird, man. I don't know. Maybe maybe this fucking pandemic didn't do what it was supposed to. Because in my mind, the pandemic was supposed to just wipe everybody out. And it sure as hell doesn't seem like it did. It seemed, cause, or at least wipe out. Because to me, weak people have stupid-ass ideas. Um, like strong, smart people usually have pretty good ideas. And all these, all this like this bullshit is usually co- coming from like weak, like dumb-ass people. And shouldn't those be the ones who died during all this fucking pandemic shit? Because it seems like they're around more so now. Um, I don't know. Anyways, uh, good job, Calvin Klein. I'm sure this is going to sell a fuckload of boxers without dick holes. (laughs) Uh, So I've never actually used a dick hole. I just put mine over the top. Uh, Not that anyone wanted to know that. All right, so before we go... Uh, I'll bring back the old segment. I don't know if this will be the last time. It might be the last time because I've been having a hard time getting research done on this. <laughs> I've been watching too much uh, Undercover Boss and episodes of The Real World from the early 90s. So, yeah. Um, so, Mindful Mayhem Monster of the Week. Uh, this week, pretty un- uh, I would imagine an unexpected one for most people. Is this some bitch? I don't know if you'd know who this is. You probably don't by the picture, because most people don't know what authors look like, uh, except for like Stephen King and like J.K. Rowling and Shakespeare, kind of oddly enough. Uh, this is Dr. Seuss, Theodore Geisel, who's not an actual doctor, which I learned that um, two days ago. <laughs> I thought he was a fucking doctor. Uh, apparently, he just calls himself Dr. Seuss, or called himself. He's dead. Called himself Dr. Seuss the same way that, like, Bill Cosby called himself Dr. William H. William H. Cosby. Oh, that's not a good, <laughs> that's not a good Cosby impression, sorry. But the Theo. Okay, maybe a little better. Um, blah. Uh, <laughs> so, Dr. Seuss um, is a fucking scumbag. Uh, was a scumbag. He is dead, burning in hell right now. I am positive. Um. So I didn't. I did not know Dr. Seuss was a piece of shit. I know that whenever, I guess it was last year, um, everybody was like losing their minds over like three or four of uh, Dr. Seuss's books. Like, oh, they're pulling them off the shelves, and then all the fucking uh, racist, aka uh, NRA members, <laughs> weird overlap, huh? Um, started like, oh, we gotta buy them up. They can't get rid of Dr. Seuss, um, which. Oh, you know, it's probably because it's about the only couple books that they know how to read. So, and then I, like, looked at it. I was like, well, what the fuck was so... Here, let me see. I don't know. Maybe I'm making these pictures too big because it's blocking me. Um, like, I don't know what... 
Like, I looked him up, and I was like, I don't think any of this shit seems that bad. And there was an, a Chinese dude in there that was a wee stereotypical, but, you know, what the fuck? These books are written a long-ass time ago. So, I was just like, yeah, Dr. Seuss probably not that bad of a dude. I mean, he wrote amazing books for, like, that really helped children out a lot. Uh, amazing messages. Not really sure what Green Eggs and Ham's message is, but apparently there is one. Um, so... Dr. Seuss was a wee bit racist. Uh, and it turns out these fucking, um, you know, little like sissy, like, oh, we got to get rid of everything. This seems like it would hurt people's feelings. They might have actually been right. <laughs> so I owe you an apology. Um, so before Dr. Seuss was like really well known, he used to write like um, newspaper cartoons, like news strip, uh, whatever you call them, like cartoon strips for newspapers. He was also hired um, during World War II, like the early stages of World War II, to work on this project where, because they were trying to teach different like survival tactics, techniques, uh, weapon safety stuff to the GIs who were about to go into World War II, who were like in their basic training. But then they noticed that whenever they were showing videos of, um, there were like real instructional videos, Nobody was paying attention to that shit. They were all falling asleep, and you can't have that. Um, so they were like, well, fuck, we could, um, we could do cartoons. <laughs> Maybe people pay attention to it. So they hired Walt Disney. Well, so it was started by Frank Capra. Who Frank, Frank Capra is one of the most uh, like influential movie directors of all time. He made, um, I think, It's a Wonderful Life. Um, like a lot of like super like sappy, sentimental movies from... You know, like the 30s and 40s. It's a Wonderful Life's the main one that I remember. Um, but so he worked on actually like writing and like directing the car, the instructional videos. Then they hired Walt Disney, um, Chuck Jones, uh, who was Chuck Jones was the animator for Looney Tunes. Hired Walt Disney. Everybody knows Walt Disney. Hired Theodore Geisel, aka Dr. Seuss, to do animations. And they hired uh, Mel Blanc. And Mel Blanc is the guy who did the voice of, like, every single Looney Tunes character. So Bugs Bunny, like, the original voices, uh, to make these cartoons. Turns out, <laughs> the cartoons were super fucking racist. Um, so here's one of them, which, God, I feel bad, like, even showing these. I don't know if I should, well, fuck it, who cares. So here's one, um, <laughs> so what have you done today to help save our country from them? Uh, obviously, on the left is either Charlie Chaplin or Adolf Hitler. Um, on the right is <laughs> supposed to be, um, fuck, I always forget his name. Not Hideki Toho. Um, the guy, he was the leader of Japan during World War II. I always forget his name. Emperor Hirohito. So the guy on the right is supposed to be, I believe, Emperor Hirohito. Um, and yeah, so this is one that actually Dr. Seuss made. So like Walt Disney made some, and so did Chuck Jones from Looney Tunes. Um, and actually, if you go back and watch old old Looney Tunes, some of those like instruction World War II instructional things are still in them. Like they just took them and put them into uh, Looney Tunes cartoons. So, anyways, um, yeah, that's a that's not good. That's not how you should. <laughs> You should not draw Japanese people like that. Granted, we, I mean, at the time, we had just been bombed by the Japanese. Um, December 7th, 1941. Day that will live in infamy, never forget. Um, reason I don't eat Japanese food. You never know when it'll happen again. So, that's not good. Um, now, here's one that he did. For, so, there was some. So, here's one that he was doing that were part of like cartoon trips um, that were promoting this. So, he used to do like cartoon advertisements also for uh, different companies would hire them like hey we need you to make a comic strip to promote like a, a certain product that we're going to put in newspapers one that he did was this mosquito repellent uh, <laughs> and I mean there's a lot of a lot of cartoons you can find where it's not good so here's one <laughs> fuck <laughs> so <laughs> holy shit dude so this is um, one that he made. Um, I'm just going to read it. Uh, and I'm going to try not to put an accent on the second part, but God, it's going to be hard. So my name's Crusoe Robinson J. But that's weird. So Robinson Crusoe. May I have the honor of joining you? The African... Um, 
not only African American, but the African who is on the right says, "Not unless you swim back after some flit, Mister." <laughs> the flies on this island are fearful. Um, saying "Mista" is probably not good, and I'm proud of myself for not putting an accent on it because I almost did. I almost really churched it up on that one. <laughs> but I mean, look at that. That is fucking. I mean, that is the exact like um, minstrel, like minstrel look. And this is fucking Doctor Seuss. This is the dude that made the goddamn Grinch. Oh, jeez, Louise. I mean, look at. I mean, that is bad. Okay, now here's the other one that I saw. I mean, fuck. <laughs> Holy shit. I mean, that is... I feel like that had to have been racist even back then. Like, I know that, you know, things become more racist, like, as they go on, or, like, we kind of look at them through, like, a different point of view. But fucking hell, how was that not seen as being crazy racist back then? Like, look at that. I mean, that is not even, like... Like, when you draw it, like, draw people like that. Like, you... I mean, they don't even look like people. I mean, fuck me. And that's for the same, that uh, mosquito repellent. See, the guy's being boiled alive by these Africans. And he comes up with the mosquito repellent and blasts one of the mosquitoes. And I guess they're probably just going to save his life because he protected them from mosquitoes. Whew. Oddly enough, people who live in Africa usually don't get malaria. Um, so this... It's very uninformed <laughs> in a lot of ways. Um, yeah, because that's where sickle cell comes from. Sickle cell is like a byproduct of most people of African heritage developing a natural immunity to malaria. So it causes um, like the sickle shaping of the red blood cells. So, see, I am smarter than I look. Uh, also, I just overheard that. I have no idea whether that's true. Um, so, anyway, so there's Dr. Seuss's racist shit. Uh, which some people may would think is the worst thing about Dr. Seuss. No, not the worst thing about Dr. Seuss. Well, I don't know. It's pretty fucking bad. But um, how, so what he did to his wife, Mrs. Seuss, <laughs> um, is a little bit worse. So I'm just going to kind of go through the notes on this. So he had a wife named Helen, uh, Helen Geisel. So not Seuss, but Helen Geisel, who got really sick. And ended up becoming partially paralyzed. And um, while this is happening, she ended up getting cancer, like super terminal cancer. It was partially paralyzed, always sick, like, I mean, was going down, like, horribly. While this was happening, uh, Dr. Seuss was cheating on her the entire time she was sick with a family friend. A person who was actually friends with Dr. Seuss's wife, Helen, who was dying from cancer and par and partially paralyzed um so she obviously pretty upset that that happened and she killed herself because of it in the suicide note she says i am too old and enmeshed in everything you do and are that i cannot conceive of life without you this is her talking about Dr. Seuss, the son of a bitch that wrote, did those cartoons and is cheating on her while she's paralyzed slash dying of cancer. Um, she also said, my going will leave quite a rumor, but you can say I was overworked and overwrought. Your reputation with your friends and fans will not be harmed. And then um, she died from suicide right after that. I believe she shot herself. And immediately after that, he married the woman that he was cheating on his former wife with. The family friend. They got married very quickly after she killed herself. Uh, yeah. So fuck Dr. Seuss. <laughs> Holy shit. I mean, that is, that is evil. Like, super fucking evil. Like, I'm an asshole to an extent. I would never do that. I mean, I would never cheat on anyone anyways, uh, mostly just because of a lack of options. But even if I had a lot of options, don't think I would cheat. I never have. Um, been cheated on is a pretty shit feeling. But I can't imagine being cheated on while I'm partially paralyzed, while I'm dying of cancer, 
from like my fucking actual life partner. Like we are married, and the son of a bitch is cheating on me with our friend, like a family friend. And yeah, so she writes this, writes that suicide note, and in the suicide note, she's still just like, you know, like hey, I just I don't want you to be upset. Like what the fuck? Whew. So yeah, then she offs herself. Doctor Seuss marries the mistress and keeps going on with a, a pretty successful career. Until a couple of years ago, and they took out like three of his books. Um, yeah, wild. So that that'll wrap up uh, the old monster of the week. I don't know if I'm gonna do another one for a little while. It's actually like I enjoy looking up like dark things and like history and stuff. Um, but it gets a little fucking depressing just reading about like, all right, who are some people who did fucked up shit? Like, <laughs> I mean, then you're just reading through like, oh well. This person uh, was a bit of a monster. Because I was trying not to do, like, serial killer stuff because it's obvious. I was trying to find people who, like, people in general look at as being, you know, like, decently nice people. But they actually, like, underneath it all were scumbags. And I believe I found that with Mother Teresa, Jimmy Savile, and Dr. Seuss. So I'll probably do a few more. Got to find some. Like, Henry Ford's always a good one. He was a Nazi. I mean, you can do a whole, I could do, like, a, really a whole thing about, um... People who were not. Charles Lindbergh was a Nazi. Um, a bunch of people from history who are universally adored were massive Hitler supporters. Uh, JFK's dead. So, yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I don't know. Um, but, yeah. So, I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> it's always fun to leave on a, a fucking happy note. But, um, yeah. I'm going to go have a couple panic attacks. <laughs> and uh, watch real world from 1994 so that is my life alrighty well goodbye